Oh man, hopefully you guys aren't getting sick and bored of Clone Wars content news because from the sound of it, we're just getting started. So let me indulge myself a bit more on Clone Wars content, ladies and gentlemen, because recently the senior producer, Carrie, was on a new podcast show called The Escape Pod Cast, and they had her on there for about two hours, and they talked about a lot of stuff that we already uh, learned about this week, such as the uh, such as the new characters that are coming, such as the, the negotiator, as well as Genos' territory battles, but they went into a lot more depth with Carrie. So if you want to check out the full thing, it's down in the video description, link down below there. Go check it out. It's a two-hour conversation. Conversation. I did listen to the whole entire thing. A lot of fun banter back and forth. Uh, a lot of discussions uh, that are going to be a bit more in depth in this video. But I want to make sure you guys get the highlights in case you don't have time to watch a two-hour podcast because <laughs> I didn't have time myself, but I feel like I was obligated to kind of listen to it. So the first thing we're going to talk about, which is what they talked about first, is Shakti, the newest character in Galaxy of Heroes, and. Carrie kind of went on this whole tangent before answering her question regarding Shock T that oftentimes they do this thing called nesting dolls where you get one thing but there's also another thing that's going to be coming soon and another thing and another thing and another thing kind of like how nesting dolls work. You, you know it's been interesting this approach that we're doing with Clone Wars because there's a piece of this and um, you can read between the lines here. When we uh, first kind of did the rework of Jedi Anakin obviously we didn't release his Zeta because it was the synergy with Padme and we hadn't announced Padme yet and everybody was like how could you not give him a Zeta? And so sometimes when we're talking about these characters that are part of like docking synergies, we'll say, um, or as we say internally, we call it the nesting dolls, um, <laughs> then sometimes it might look like not everything is totally done. So with that being said, she's absolutely going to beef up the existing clone troopers and she's um, going to beef up the Galactic Republic Jedi right now. It seems like she's alluding to that clones will probably get be a, get reworked, maybe new clones in the future, maybe clones will get uh, some Zetas, who knows, or maybe some other reasons to make Shakti more valuable because she does make the clones much better now as we've seen. They're not like crazy good, they're not like out of this world amazing, but they are much better than before. So if you're wondering if Shakti has a purpose in the future, that's one thing to keep in mind that there's probably another nesting doll after the release of Shakti that'll make her make sense make her clones make more sense so stay tuned for that one thing they did mention in here is that shakti will be useful in the light side genosis territory battles so that's going to be one thing that's coming out later dark side genosis territory battles is coming first and later on we're going to get the light side version that'll be coming in kind of like the inverse of what we have with dark side territory battles but one of the things that were was uh, sent to us about all of this when they were telling us about shakti is that um, she's got a niche Geonosis light side territory battle um, position. Are, are, are you able to talk about that right now? Yeah, sure. I can talk about that because I think one of the, the kind of keys to how we do stuff, right, is that we're, like I said, I mentioned nesting doll earlier. It's kind of setting up the future of things, right? And so we're releasing the dark side right now. And the dark side territory battle is going to rely on the separatist droids. So if you choose not to get Shakti now, there will be more value to her later, as I'm sure you can imagine. For now, you know, she's just a character that you can start working on if you love her and you're working in Clone Wars. So also, another thing that we got confirmation of a couple days ago was the release of, uh, or soon to be release, of Wat Tambor and the Genosian Brood Alpha. Again, we made a video talking about this, confirming that it is coming soon, and Carrie kind of went into a little more details as to how Wat Tambor and the, the Genosian are going to operate, what mechanics are they going to have. We don't have complete kit information, but it goes a little bit more uh, in-depth than this whole Pose us and they kind of uh, get, tell us that the release of these are going to be very close in line to how Captain Han Solo was released, as well as Rebel Officer Lee Organa. So they didn't say exactly how the Genos and Brood Alpha is going to be farmed, which is what people are really concerned about the most. People are hoping that uh, the Genos and Brood Alpha will be released kind of like Colonel Stark and Captain Han Solo, where they are free to play accessible. So we're going to see she didn't say anything specific to whether the Genos and Brood Alpha will be free to play accessible, but kind of like how they say here already on the forums uh, that sh uh, that the uh, Watan Bor he is going to be the the Rebel Officer Lee Organa reward once you get the genos and brood alpha kind of like we said before oh we got the mail we got the mail here's the mail that never fails it makes me run around my tail i know i'm gonna get a million comments you guys are gonna ask what did arnold get we just got some Four terabyte SSDs, baby. These videos are taking too much storage on my computer lately. <laughs> so Wat Tambor seems to be an interesting character because we already found out that this is going to be like a Hermit Yoda type of character, which she points out is the first dark side non-combatant character that we have in the game right now. And what she says is that Wat Tambor will be able to distribute different kinds of tech to his allies. And you get to choose what piece of tech he gives the, the which ally. The designer who works on Wat Tambor, Kyle, um, he has done something I think super cool 
people. And it's um, this is ability that he has where he's basically like um, distributing tech. And so there's going to be kind of an option between which tech that he distributes to which allies. The, the way that it was described to us is that this tech that he has will act as many uniques, essentially, you know, kind of uh, extorting his own team for, for people that are familiar with current game mechanics. He's arming the Separatists. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Right. And that feels very, like, on, on brand for him. And, you know, he's going to be the first uh, dark side non-combatant. Now, the Genos in Brood Alpha, this is a character that's going to have some interesting things. And as we're going to see, uh, with, as when we get to Genos' territory battles and the discussion there, they're really playing with this whole minion thing, an extra ally slot that's going to be brought in. It's a, it's kind of a new mechanic they're playing around with. And they did confirm that the Genosians will be getting a touch-up. Uh, to kind of pair along with this Genosian Brood Alpha. I believe they specifically called out Pog of the Lesser and uh, Genosian Spy. And they said the Brood Alpha, or at least this is what the the, the, the podcasters say, they saw the kit apparently for the Genosian Brood Alpha already. And they kind of said it's something along the lines of uh, uh, how like boss kit, kit is working. Genosian Brood Alpha is also leveraging some new tech that we're doing uh, as a mm. part of the territory battle, which is a summoning tech. And so uh, mm. he's going to summon another unit. And so there's actually a six slot, as you know, for when you borrow an ally for some of the game modes from a friend. And um, he's going to be leveraging that to summon uh, a brute. And so you get kind of two characters for the price of one with this guy. Some of the Geonosians are getting um, kind of touched up a little bit, but but the big kind of piece here is not only is he bringing someone else to the battle but he is going to be kind of bringing all of the genosians up with this um hive mind mechanic In this case we were like look there are a couple of characters that really need to be looked at poggles being looked at yeah. I believe the Genosian Spy is too. With this character though too, I do like this. Uh, he is a tank lead, uh, but uh, looking at his kit though, it kind of reminds me a little, a little bit of Bosk uh, in that he's going to make your Geo teams just that much better. And I like the sound of this because I like my Geos. So think about it when you do like Dark Side battles or Light Side battles or Cantina battles, you call in an ally. So you have six characters going into battle. That's how the Genos and Brute Alpha is going to work. You're going to have your five Genos and then you're going to get the plus one uh, Genos and Brute that comes along with the Genos and Brute Alpha. So that was pretty much the first 30 minutes of the podcast summarized right here. And it was closed off with this first segment by saying that expect the Clone Wars content to get kind of that KOTOR-like love. Where you're going to get a lot of stuff. You're going to be bombarded with a lot of new characters, a lot of reworks, touch-ups, and all this other new content. I, I know you can't talk about future characters or anything like that. Here's the one that needs to come to the game, and he will be the first neutral. We need Hondo Onaka. Oh, man, I have to be careful about what I say. Uh, uh, <laughs> Hondo is also on the list and has been actually been on the list for quite a while so um it, it's hard right i mean of course it's hard but like there's so many characters that we want to do still and um figuring it out like i think one of the things we decided to do was trend a little bit more towards a theme and i'm not going to say that it was like a win state for me that everybody was like i'm done with the old republic get to something else uh but i do want people to feel like we've done justice and so maybe by the time we get through all the clone wars content you guys will be like all right you can take a break for a little bit Tell me, that makes me excited clone wars is what i live uh, live for in star wars so very excited to see that but now we're going to move on to the next part of the topic this was kind of like a little intermission before we headed off into Genosis territory battle discussion uh they kind of brought up the conversation of the use of the word benevolence and negotiations in their ship post they did the, their their ship post they did the other day gotta be careful how i pronounce words here <laughs> oh we saw in this uh ship post they did a while ago uh that they they use these fun words benevolence and negotiations and uh they carry didn't want to explicitly say anything in this podcast but basically if you read between the lines these are indications of what's going to be coming in the future. And obviously, we've already seen that negotiations is referring to the negotiator, General Kenobi's capital ship that was confirmed just last night. And they didn't confirm this explicitly, but I have a feeling that the, the conversation they had going on, the banter between the carry as well as the podcasters, they were playing with this word benevolence. So if I had to guess, people who are upset that General Grievous is not getting his capital ship right now, I have a feeling the benevolence, the, the, the malevolence is probably something that's going to be happening in the future. There was definitely one sentence that was purposefully out of place. Yes. Okay, so, so, so he did show us some very good benevolence. Am I correct? Mm-hmm. And negotiation. Okay. That's not the go. only thing. And negotiations <laughs> will be uh, coming or something like that? Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> okay, that's all. That's all we need to know. <laughs> so, uh... because as I indicated the other day in my video, when we found out we got the the, the the negotiator, we really have no separatist ships in this game. We only have three Genosians, and that's not really enough to create a, a fleet composed of separatists. Unlike the Galactic Republic, they are ready for a, another good uh, Galactic Republic capital ship. They have plenty of ships to work from, whereas the separatists, they have nothing. So I have a feeling, expect this uh, separatist uh, fleet faction to expand a bit more. Probably the things like the Vulture Droid. I keep going on and on about that because they gave some indication a while ago about that. And now we move into Genosis territory battles. And now we finally got a lot of actual confirmation, some exclusive stuff that wasn't really talked about uh, this week that much. Although we did get a forum post last night that the boss that we're going to be fighting in uh, the Genosis territory battles it's gonna be the accolade now i if you got you know for me personally i've had nightmares about the accolade when i was a kid played a lot of the classic battlefront 2 you saw the accolade on um felucia that's where they're from so one thing interesting about this is that they kind of called us a mini raid in the podcast and as this forum post says not only are you contending with this beast but you'll be in the middle of a three-way battle where waves of jedi are fighting against you and the accolade as well it is uh it's challenging but it's also going to have other things to it so uh, again with the caveat that everything is going to change he literally showed this to me on friday as i was walking out the door he um for the first time ever you will actually see other it's not just you versus the accolade you're going to see other people come in because it is uh not just you know one group versus one group and there's a lot of fighting going on and so there are going to be other people coming in and fighting the accolade that are from the the pv side as well is wow. this a simultaneous thing that's yeah. going on like your other not other, your humans. other it's pve at the moment but it's sort of like okay. the first foray not into just 1v1 and it's really about the experience i'm not suggesting that we're like for the first time ever, we're gonna have a mode where people simultaneously play. Now, I didn't quite understand this point that they were talking about. It sounds, they said, first of all, think more uh, of like uh, more something more than a 1v1 type of thing, but a 2v1 where you're gonna be in there, but you're gonna see someone come in and also help it help out in the battle. Now, they didn't say it's a real time thing where someone real time will hop into the battle and help you take out this Ackley. They're saying that just expect, I'm guessing it's like maybe a, Think of like an ally slot that someone comes in and helps you out. I don't quite know, but they, they want to say that think of 2v1 where two people are helping, but that second person isn't a real life person helping out. But in regards to the platoons, besides the fact that they're going to be randomized, one thing they said is that the bonuses you're getting are going to be a bit different. They're really playing with this whole minion uh, this whole minion uh, mechanic lately. We're seeing this with the Junos and Brood Alpha. We're speculating the negotiator will have minion Y-Wings, for example. Instead of getting new additional abilities, you're going to get new additional units that jump in into battle and help you out. So so again, it seems like we're going to get six people to use if you can max out these platoons. I, I don't know the exact math, how it works, but the, the bonuses are going to be a bit more different to make it a bit more interesting, try to differentiate differentiate, uh, differentiate itself from how Hoth Territory Battles was operating. We're changing kind of the mechanics of those platoons. The platoons are now going to use that summoning tech that I mentioned, and they're going to be able to summon units. Um, and so, so far in testing, people really like that wow. instead of the abilities that we had put in before. So the new thing, right? And in regards to the new stores coming out, we have the Grand Arena Championship store as well as the store that's coming in with the Genos' territory battle. Uh, they brought up the question, will we expect to see character shards there? And Carrie was kind of being teased. He was being a, a little bit of a tease. Didn't give it a direct answer to it. But the the, 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 the podcast, the, the whole summary of this whole conversation they had is that basically we could probably expect at least one of the stores to have some sort of character shards, probably for a new character, kind of like Wampa and Hermit Yoda that, that are in the guild event store that we already have right now. And then the thing that really kind of, the, the, the last big thing that really stood out to me, they had this whole discussion about real-time PvP, which I believe Carrie actually brought up on her own. I don't think that, yeah, the podcasters didn't actually ask that question themselves. Carrie actually took the time to stop the show to talk about real-time PvP because this is something they want to see happen, but they aren't sure what the community's reaction is going to be. So they, before investing all this time and money into it, because they said it's a very difficult thing for the game to create. I don't know why exactly, but they, they kind of want to see how the community will react to a real-time PvP and it's whether it's something they would like. This is like definitely in like hypothetical land in terms of like there's no plan to reveal these anytime soon. But I'll say that two features that we've been talking about for some time. Um, one is, so one is a conversation about real-time battle. I may have mentioned this in the Q&A, but um, our GM, the original EP on this game, 
uh, John Slara is like a huge proponent of doing something in real time where you can go in and actually kind of can fight, right? So it's like, oh. I would fight you and you would choose and I would choose what we do against each other and there's no AI component. Yes. Um, that is something that we are look looked into for ages. It's a tremendous amount of tech work. And one of the things that always gives me pause is that so many of our players you know, play this game at all kinds of hours and they have to drop it suddenly or, you know, they're playing it in the bathroom or whatever. Um, so it's something that we talk about a lot. And I would say that I think we're very interested to know what the appetite is for it because it's a lot of tech work to get simultaneous play that feels really good. So guys, if this is something you really want, the developers seem like they really want to make this happen. They're just not sure about the cost benefit and whether the community will really enjoy it. So if you guys really do enjoy this or you want to see that real time PVP action in the game where you're going to fight someone in real time versus fighting an AI or the computer or whatever, make sure you guys comment, make sure you guys you let the world know because it's something they are seriously considering. And I would really like to see that because that opens up a whole new aspect of competitive gameplay. And that opens up for me personally, a lot of content I could make and also so I, th I just think in general it's gonna be a lot more fun playing against other people in real time because that's how you really determine who's the better player in the game rather than who's better beating a computer nonetheless the overall picture is that a lot of Clone Wars content is coming and they want to try to take this game even farther but they just got to see how the community reacts to the stuff that they want to try to add to this game so guys like the video if you did enjoy it comment down below and all of your thoughts you heard today would love to see what you guys are thinking of with all this news I kind of shared from the podcast with you make sure you do check out the video and be sure to subscribe to this channel so you're not missing a thing because a lot of Clone Wars content is coming and I'll talk to you again very soon guys peace out